hits to that one two hook was nasty by him, a boxer putting t2 on his butt and there it is again that one two is money oh! Oh, there you go boxer get that working what a knockdown he's put on the pressure right now this is where he's got to be down there it is i knew it and he's down And we're back with another UFC 3 video. And I read all of the comments. And it seems like everybody wanted to see the ground in the clinch. So, just so happened in my last ESFL match, my pro match, I had to use a lot of the clinch and the ground just to survive and stay successful. So, as you know, these meta videos are not just about showing you what I did we're going to talk about how i did it and we're going to talk about the risk and the benefits of each position and the options that you can take for each the each position and so whenever you're fighting an opponent we're going to understand what he's trying to do what you need to look out for and what it is that i do to be successful um up until the point that i'm at now so um i want to thank everyone for all the love and support, man, I put a lot of work into these videos and I love doing them. Um, and so let's get right into the fight. He should be looking all right, for the overhands so with Tyron Right now, you well. got my latest ESFL match where I got Tyron Woodley facing off against GSP. And the first thing I do, I never come out and touch gloves, but you see, I'm playing around. And you should never play around in the octagon because what ends up doing is I get flipped around. The camera switches to the blue glove. So you should never play around in the octagon. All right. So this is how you guys want to think about when you got a grappler in your face. And when they close the distance, um, like you'll see here, when you close the distance, you can actually initiate this clinch. And, um, and that's what he does. Now, in the clinch, GSP is really good. I go for over-under, as you can see here. However, GSP gets the over-under before me. All right, so what you're about to see next, Wait, right, nice mm -hmm. me and my opponent are all trying to do transitions to the left. And it all can be have transition blocks with um, holding R2 and up. And that's what you're seeing here. You see how we break the block? Now, one thing that you have to, to do is understand that animation. As soon as I see that, I'm doing a transition block. Now, this is the most important thing. If you transition to the right, up Double does not work. Break so I was able to successfully get that transition um, right there. So luckily, I got a double under and see, I tried to break and he's blocking up. Same thing. Um, I saw that animation and that guy, it has to be second nature. Um, so that's what he's doing right now. He's blocking up. So that's going to block two positions, the break and anything to the left. So as as I'm saying, the right transition is successful. And so that's what he was doing. So I went for the leg grab here. Yeah, just being aggressive because not a lot of people expect you to go for the leg grab coming from the over under. Okay, now when you're on the ground, there are advanced transition strategies that you need to keep in mind. Just don't transition. And what you see is a lot of fakes. And that's just flicking the stick in one direction, yeah, maybe two the directions, and then going for your transition, just like that. Um, or if you see the stamina low, then you just go for your transition denial. So that's what that's the meta here. Like, I'm faking one way, and then I'm going up. I might fake up and then go to the right. You see how he's on the bottom. He's doing the same thing. He's faking one way. He's faking down. And... And so that's the meta that's been played before he actually does the transition that he wants to do. And GSP has a lot of perks whenever you're on, on the top. But see, whenever he did that transition um, sweep, it, it cost him stamina. You know, so that's the thing. I don't mind actually giving up the sweep because it's going to Man, give me that stamina advantage. And see, I'm, I'm safe here. And don't panic when you're on the ground. Just hang out. And so look, I get here and look, he's transition blocking up again. You know, so he's block it seems like he's a beast on the ground, but he's really, you know, like blocking one position. Now, when you get here, whenever somebody is striking, that means they're not transition blocking. So you can transition at that point. That's what I like to do. These strikes right here on the ground, 
are really not affecting me. Look at my power. Look at my grapple advantage. All right, now, one thing in the latest update, they increased the transition speed from this top sprawl to back um, top. And so that was faster than what I was thinking. He got a transition block right there. And you guys should just hang out right here, man. Because if you try to transition too fast, then you can get transition blocked just from strikes, just like that. So just try to hang out until his stamina goes down, then transition. You see him strike, transition. See what I'm saying? Right there. Yeah, so, true. and, and these punches are not doing anything. So right now I'm looking at his stamina, um, and I just took a chance right there. All right? And so when you pin him up against the cage, um, you know, I'm going for right transitions. And you see that, you know, uh, they're going to be uh, more – successful than the left transitions every time i do left transitions it's getting blocked because i think he's blocking up now when you see this animation just go ahead and do a right transition tonight look at how good he you is. know that left hand was up and so you know now i'm going to the right because i know he's going to block up see what i'm saying and you got a free break and now you're and now you're off so that's some of the meta for the ground you know that you want to start to think about and so um now i'm more comfortable on the feet and i'm thinking like you know hey you never know who got that right. i like to see i'm a boxer use a little more of a so coming into the second round you know i'm thinking like it's going to be you know another you know stand up striking match and i was i was looking for that denial but look i couldn't do it again and now this is the thing you're down on the mat early you know in the round what are you going to do all right so here i go for that full guard this is going to give me grapple advantage and so i try to go for the back sitting but i didn't go fast enough and he was transitioning at the yeah, same time yeah this is time. totally different than playing ranked and ranked you can now when you're on the bottom don't freak out just block because after you block then you get grapple advantage and if you don't get it the first time just block again and go a different direction and you'll probably get it and that's what i do here you know so now as soon as we get into that back top then i already know that he wants to go to that back mount you know and so i just block to the right and that's how i transition block and here you know i'm just hanging out until i see his stamina go low and then i'm back to my feet you know, but here again, he's still transition blocking up. Now, I was able to block that because I'm looking he's at his back, back foot. Oh, and when it goes forward, the then I do um, the R2 and down. You know, so because Tyron Woodley is real good at takedown denial. Look, he got me again. Now, look at his left foot. You know, I'm looking at it. So I was able to get the, um, the transition at that point. Uh, so I wasn't in that back clinch. And again, everything that I'm doing going to the left or up is getting denied. Now here you you have to know in that body lock, whenever they lunge forward like that, go ahead and just deny down. You know, here again, I tried to break, you know, but he's blocking up. Anytime he goes down, Tyron Woodley has a great 98 takedown defense, and I was able to, to get out of that. Now... I'm not just taunting here for any reason. You want to taunt with a purpose because a lot of times you can play your opponent like a puppet. They will actually throw something big and, and end up whiffing a strike. You know, and a lot of times it'll be a head kick. You can get a hey, takedown up, right there. Wasn't nothing too big, but you never Beautiful know. It could throw your opponent off or get him to throw something out of his game that he normally doesn't throw. And that's what I was going for right there. A real good job to stop an EK's uh, plan to to out clinch him right here doing a real good job shutting that game down all right so we're back up in the stand up and i'm getting a little comfortable and i was able to get a minor sway off because i was able to you know recognize one of his patterns and you guys can look at the previous videos for the striking now he gets back into the clinch and it's some of the same thing i'm still trying to go left and trying to go up and he's breaking it now whenever you get you in a muay thai clinch make a read if you see him do um, anything with his legs, then then block the body. And you see how I was able. That's a read. And so, look, even though I got no stamina, Tyron Woodley has a 98 takedown defense. So I still can make this read. 
and it, and not even free oh, flicking. Still, still blocking with no does, stamina. How does that even How happen? did he do that? He just knew it was coming, man. Already pre flicking. Yeah, he had it exactly pre denies all day. All right, so whenever I'm in that stand up now, I know that he wants to clinch. So that's all I'm looking forward to. And so after somebody throws a kick, look at that grapple advantage. You know, so I don't know if, the, if I'm going to be able to finish this guy off. So I just got to take down just for the point. So that's a one tip right there. After somebody throws that, sh that strike, you're going to have a crazy grapple advantage. You know, so a lot of times I like to go for the takedown if somebody throws like a high kick out of nowhere. You know, you might can get some points. This is the third and final All right, round. So coming into the third and final round, he's coming out high and heavy. You know, but look at his stamina. And by now I know his game plan. I know what he wants to do. You know, I know he's he's going he wants to clinch and see now I can I can break it because I know that it's coming. And now I'm back in my comfort zone, right? Because we already know what to do from the previous two videos, how to deal with forward pressure and, you know, how to deal with the striking. Okay, so transition blocking up again. Every time I'm going left, you know, he can block a left transition and a break with up. Now I get lucky here and I actually catch a break, pun intended. So yeah, I felt break. like I needed back. to count my lucky stars right here, right? And so it was like, all right, you need to focus on this clinch. This clinch is not allowing you um, to win this match and get a knockout. So like every time I'm throwing a combo, my my thumb is on the up. You know, I'm ready for it and waiting. You know, so I got the MO now. Now we can actually sit back and execute the game plan. Now, you remember in the previous video, we was wondering, like, what does a minor back sway? When can you use it? Somebody throwing a head kick and you just out of range. You actually can use that minor back sway like I did here. And look, it goes for a big whiff. And look at his stamina drain on that. You know, I mean, his stamina is just like all the way down now whenever you whip something that big and with gsp like once you start landing these major shots you know um a straight and an uppercut look at his stamina three shots and there's that oh, rear uppercut chop. off that jab he's been looking for that all night one two one rear uppercut gets it in there they're gonna cover up as it backs out though ek knows it trying to chase him down but the stamina's real low now and box has got the stamina advantage over the closing and later and in the round back now right. you're where you're comfortable and so I know that he's going for this the, this clinch, but his stamina is low, so it's easy to block now. I got a bigger window to block, you know, because he's tired. You know, and I could take these shots. They don't even hurt because he's throwing them with literally no stamina. You know, now the problem with that in GSP is later in the round, you know, GSP is going to fade. And, you know, now I'm just hitting him with my, you know, 1-6 combinations. Oh man, see when he's in that close, Darth is not going to be in there when that uppercut comes down the middle in that pocket. Oh no, man, next jab uppercut is really going to hurt Mr. Darth if he stays every in day. Game. Every day, one, two, one, oh, oh there he goes. Man. It was a matter of time. And the thing with GSP, his chin strength and his toughness is only at 87. So when he gets hurt, like it's hard for him to come back. So I can just tee off and unload because I know GSP's heart and his chin is low. So that's why when I got this takedown, I decided to get up. I didn't want to leave it in the hands of the judges. And, you know, I'm going to throw everything at him and the kitchen sink. You know, that's what I'm doing right here. And he's going for a takedown because he's trying to survive. You know, but we're in our comfort zone. We survived the ground and the clinch. And now with his stamina so low, we can really just wing shots. And, you know, that was all she wrote. Good fly over. Wow, Boxer just methodically, it, you know, ever since he taunted, you know, I think that was when Mr. Dolph realized he came with a game plan. He was going to grapple him. He was going to clinch him up, put him against the cage, work that clinch position, and it got halfway through that second round. And, you know, Mr. Boxer was like, didn't work. What are you going to do now? And he just started to pick him apart.
good and looked tough to beat, man. Stopped the takedowns, stopped the clinch attempts, and slowly picked him apart with his striking. And, you know, he's, he's looking like a serious threat right now. It's starting to get better and better and better. All right, thanks everyone for watching the video. I had a great time making it. And let me know what you guys want to see next because it's a lot of facets of the game that we yet to uncover. As I was watching Goat and Unibot, I learned about feints and how they can be effective. So let me know if you guys want me to do a video on that. I actually got some good rank match footage also on standing and banging because it's not just about pressing buttons and who gets lucky. It's actually a, you know, some science behind that too. So if you guys want to, you know, know about standing and banging or any other topic, getting them comments as y'all as y'all have been doing. And let me know what you want to see next. All right. Now, if you ever find yourself in that top 100 club, search for PS4 top 100 club. Hit me up. We'll get you in. OK, now, if you like this video, man, please subscribe. Help your boy out, man. We approaching 10K and I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before I go to E3, which is next month. So you guys, please help me get there. Um, I want to thank you guys for where you guys brought the channel thus far. I'm con I'm going to continue to make quality UFC videos better than any other channel out there. And you guys continue to support me. Um, love all you guys. See you in the next video. Peace.